So in the previous lecture, uh, we were exploring how uh, Rust differs from other programming languages. So now let's continue that discussion. In this video, we will dive into uh, some more interesting aspects of Rust. Now let's slightly modify this code. I will create one more variable. Let's say let y is equal to ampersand uh, x. This is similar to creating a pointer. Let's say int p is equal to ampersand x. Here y is actually called as a reference. So we'll learn all those things in later sections of this course. But for a time being, just to help you, you can consider this as a pointer, which holds the address of x. It's very simple. So let's see that in the diagram, how it looks. In the diagram, it would look something like this. So x was there in some memory address or location, let's say 0 cross 200. The value is stored in this memory location is 10 and which is referenced or which is accessed by using the variable x. And now there is one more variable created. Its name is y and it is created in the memory location 0 cross 400, let's say. And the content of this variable is the address of x that is 0 cross 200. That's why I can draw this line which signifies that y points to x. That's why in the code I said this. This is something similar to this code in C. And when you do this, so now let's try to change the value of x to let's say 15. This is similar to making x is equal to 15 in C also. And after that, let's print the value of y. I will dereference y because it's a pointer and I will try to print the value of y. So this is similar to print app. Sorry, here this is y. And print app, let's say star y. So this may be the C equivalent. Don't worry about the syntax. This is not a legal code in C because it is the printer format is not correct. That's okay. In C, definitely this print app would have printed the value 15. Let's see what happens in Rust. In Rust, this is an illegal code again. So let's see what happens. Here it is. Rust says cannot assign x so it is actually pointing to this statement cannot assign to x because it is borrowed so in rust this is called as borrow there are different types of borrowing like mutable borrow immutable borrow and all those things we will discuss later but for a time being you can understand something like this there is some entity called y which is referring to x and Rust doesn't allow the referent to undergo unexpected change. For example, let's say this would definitely prevent the data race and it will help Rust to build its other complicated features such as concurrency, etc. Here, y is called as borrower and x is a referent. Rust doesn't allow a referent to undergo unexpected change when there is a borrower. Because when x undergoes changes, it won't inform y. That means that it had undergone certain changes. That's why what Rust says here is, so if you were to modify the value of x while y holds a reference to x, it could lead to data races and other undefined behavior because y and x would become out of sync. So Rust helps uh, prevent these types of errors. When we wrote this code, that is let y is equal to ampersand x, and this is also called as borrow or immutable borrow. Y borrows x immutably. That means it's a promise that y will not try to change the value of x by using, let's say, point dereferencing. It shouldn't do that because y is borrowing x as read only. There is also another type of borrowing called mutable borrow. That is, if I make in this code let y is equal to ampersand, and if I use the keyword mute and then I write x, this would be mutable borrow. That means y is allowed to change the value of its referent that is x 
only if x is mutable. Now let's go back to our code and let's fix this line. Here, this is immutable borrow. So we just understood that this is a promise we make not to change the value of the referent. We will use referent only for the read only purpose. The equivalent code then in C is not this, but this one const int star y is equal to ampersand x. In C, this code would not have given any errors. So y is holding the address of x and then x is getting changed without informing y. So this would definitely lead to problems like data races, but that is prevented in Rust. So here, this is not allowed. What if I make this one as star y is equal to 15? Y is a pointer, so I can do this. In C, this would be like this, star y is equal to 15. So obviously, it is not allowed in both the programming languages because in C, you are making a promise that the value pointed by y will be constant and you are trying to change it. So C compiler also would have prevented that by throwing an error. So Rust also throws an error here. You see, Rust also complains that there is some problem. Let's run once again. And Rust also says the same, that cannot assign to star y because this is an immutable borrow. That means y shouldn't try to change the value of x or y shouldn't try to change the value of the referent. So we can fix this by using mute here. When you make mute, its meaning changes in C as this. So now this is allowed in both the programming languages. So now let's run this code and yes, it prints 15. Here, this is called as mutable borrow. And there are other rules related to the mutable borrow and uh, immutable borrow. All those things we'll see later. Now let's get back to our lecture. So all these borrowing rules have been checked by the uh, borrow checker. So unlike Rust, C doesn't have borrow checker that enforces these borrowing rules. Hence, you may end up seeing runtime errors in C, whereas Rust uses a feature called borrow checker. So all these uh, borrowing issues and access issues, uh, unexpected mutations, everything is uh, prevented at the compile time itself. C does have the const keyword which can be used to indicate that variable or pointer should not be modified, but it is not as robust as Rust borrow checker. In Rust, the compiler will catch all these errors at compile time, which makes it easier to find and fix these errors unlike seeing surprises in runtime as in C. But in C, everything should be managed by the developer and most of the things are not enforced by the language. That's why we would often see the runtime surprises in C. Now let's see one more example of memory safety. So Rust automatically deallocates uh, the heap memory. Okay, so in Rust, you typically do not have to manually manage uh, heap memory using functions like new and free as you do in C++ or using malloc and uh, free library calls as you uh, do in C programming language. Okay, uh, you don't see new and free keywords, I mean similar keywords in Rust. So Rust actually automates memory management through its ownership system where each piece of data has a clear compile time defined owner and the memory is automatically deallocated when the owner goes out of scope, okay? So this we will explore in subsequent lectures. Consider this example. Here we are comparing a memory cleanup in C and Rust when variable goes out of scope. Let's consider the C program first. Here is a function where this function allocates some 20 bytes of memory to this variable S. So the memory is allocated in the heap using malloc and then that memory allocation is filled with some data and then this function let's say consumes that variable or that data and then the developer has to manually clean up before returning from this function otherwise this will lead to memory leak in c and also while compiling uh, if you don't code this i mean if you don't free the memory then the compiler may not throw any errors but in Rust, it's not like that. In Rust or C++, what happens is 
when the variable goes out of scope, the memory will be cleaned up automatically. Don't worry about this syntax about strings and all. So we will cover that in separate lectures later. Here, this string is stored in the heap memory and uh, its reference is stored in uh, the variable s and this function consumes s, so let's say. And when this variable goes out of scope, the drop method of that uh, data structure will be called in this case string and uh, the memory will be deallocated or released. And please don't think that there is a garbage collector or something. There is no garbage collector in Rust. So in both cases, the string hello is stored in the heap, but Rust cleans up the memory using the drop method. Basically, during compilation itself, the compiler of the Rust comes to know that this variable goes out of scope. So that inserts the call to the drop method of that uh, data structure, in this case string, and that's how the memory will be cleaned up.